So I cannot talk about that, but Israeli should have this capability. You can't say what you've done exactly. We've heard from others that we have those capabilities, and not only do we have them, we're, we're rolling them out and using them on a regular basis. On my left is the Kirya, the military headquarters, and on my right, Azraeli Towers and the Sarona Market, the business heart of this land. Specifically, when you're talking about cyber, the military sector and the private sector not only cooperate, but they feed off of each other. To some, this connection might seem odd, but here it is a natural and ongoing relationship. One pool of people moves from one sector to the other, and the two build technologies that wouldn't be possible otherwise. I had the privilege of sitting down with David Brimo, who spent 15 years in 8200, Israel's secretive leading intelligence unit and the center for the IDF cyber defense. Hi. Hey. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you as well. He also spent three years as the executive director of technology for Israel's cyber directorate, before starting his own private cybersecurity company, Senomi. In short, he knows his stuff. So David, let's start in the beginning. You know, cyber is one of the top priorities from a defense perspective today. Yeah, cyberspace was changed. Everyone is connected. And this connection gives the intelligent forces lots of possibilities to get the information in a way that was impossible to do in the past. When you try to protect the, the country, protect the government, protect your election process, protect the small and medium businesses. You have to protect against everybody, every technology. During my years in the Cybersecurity Authority, we handled hundreds of cyber attacks on Israel from China, from Russia, from Iran, from Hamas, from Hezbollah. This capability is something that each state should have in order to be in control in the cyberspace. So I cannot talk about that, but Israeli should have this capability. You can't say what you've done exactly. We've heard from others that we have those capabilities, and not only do we have them, we're, we're rolling them out and using them on a regular basis. Last year, there was an Iranian attack on the water infrastructure in Israel. As a state, when somebody tries to poison your water, what would you do? Israel is heavily engaged in a cyber war. It's a matter of national defense. But the cyber war doesn't stop with the military. Private companies that hold our data are just as much of a target. If you've ever used your credit card online, you are a potential victim in the new cyber war. About 60% of small and medium businesses have been breached during a one single year. And I thought... Do, do they all know about it, or is this... If you think about attacks that you are not aware of, it could be higher. Our data is not in our control. We, we all know about Google, Facebook, Microsoft, but there are so many third-party companies that control our data. We depend on their protection in order to be sure that our data is not exposed in the Internet. Exposed in the dark web can be by anybody. So it's a big issue for individuals, for companies, for governments, for industry, how to protect themselves. The interplay between the military and private sectors takes place inside a sort of feedback loop. The IDF is helping develop new founders and CEOs in the private sector. Then these private companies often supply contracts to the IDF. In essence, the two arms of Israel's cyber defense, military and private, couldn't exist without each other. You know, there's almost this claim against the Israeli startup industry that it's a clique of graduates of 8200. Mm -hmm. And in many cases it is, but it's a huge unit that has a, a large number of people graduating every year that have had their ability tested and honed in a unit that, that teaches cybersecurity and computer systems and gives a very deep knowledge of, of development. So it's almost setting them up naturally to, to go into the private sector. Yeah, you, you understand that your contribution mm -hmm. to the army, it's not only to be a fighter, it's not only to be a pilot, it's to be a cyber warrior, but also gives you lots of opportunities afterwards 
in the industry, in the high tech, in the cyber companies. Nowadays, our entire world is interconnected. From the cell phones in our pocket, to the smartwatches on our wrists, to the thousands of computers and offices all around us, traffic lights and even the drones flying through there, they're all talking to each other. And despite the benefit that this brings, it also makes them incredibly susceptible to cyber attacks. Over the past generation or so, an entire new industry has emerged, the cyber industry. Without that industry and the tools that it provides, this way of life, this interconnectivity wouldn't be possible. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom and God bless you from Jerusalem.